If you like what I'm doing here and want to support me so that I'm able to make more of this more frequently, consider checking out the new memberships I added. You get access to videos a bit earlier, VIP Discord channels, there is a community Discord as well now by the way, come over and say hi! And you also get this cool membership emblem next to your username that slowly changes the longer you are a member. Obviously, your name is also going to appear at the end of the video. One of these tiers also including me drawing your profile picture in my doodle art style at the end of the video. So thank you for your continued support and enjoy the next part of... Uh, uh, uh. Gidonia is a classic open world RPG that was primarily developed by just a single person. Which is really impressive for this type of game and also somewhat excuses the game looking like... well like it does. Which doesn't in particular mean that it looks bad, just that the developer was extremely ambitious with his vision here. And it is a fully fleshed RPG. With character customization, skill points and trees, and a vast world to explore with many side quests and seriously, please don't get put off by how this game looks, because yeah, you can see it here already, the game is clunky as hell, but still, I don't know the last time I got entertained this much from a basic ass side quest. I won't spoil them all here, because there are genuinely some hilarious ones over here. The first side quest I found, for example, was given to me by this magic tree, who got angry at the humans for eating its apple children, to such a degree that its new apples turned poisonous. So obviously we can take some and give them to people in our village to help the tree take its revenge. <laughs> This game is seriously unhinged. <laughs> but in the best way possible. I actually was promised to get this horse gifted to me if I get it to like me. But then the guy suddenly charged me for it. And because I didn't have enough money, my only option was to beat the shit out of him and the guard who acted as a witness. But hey, before I go on even more on a tangent, how about we finally talk about the necromancer aspect. You have a lot of different skill trees you can level. After leveling up, you get a few skill points that you can invest in one of the trees to unlock a slew of spells. Focusing everything into dark magic gives you rare skeleton and skeleton mage. Nothing you haven't seen before. But I like how they balanced it by your summons lowering your maximum mana to not make you an all-powerful spellcaster while still having an army that follows you. Combat itself is also pretty alright. Nothing too complex and mainly just smacking things. But especially in the beginning, your summons can be a godsend. You can also upgrade your minions to higher tiers, which also changes how they look. Always a nice touch, which is fully appreciated. Now the bad things though. The worst part so far of the game was the main quest. Side stuff and exploring was pretty enjoyable, if not outright hilarious. But the main quest was a slog. Bad pacing in cutscenes, endless running in one direction, every mission is level gated and I'm also pretty sure that every voice character in this game is AI generated. And I still can't translate some of these rules yet. So what should I do with this one? Either that or they found the most boring sounding voice actors imaginable. This is a problem I have with this game. It just got worse with me finding out about them also having announced a sequel. The journey looks a lot nicer and more polished. But just one look at the promo art and yeah. This is 100% AI generated, so the voices are probably two. And at this point, what else is AI in this game? But the worst thing about it, the bone serpent you can summon is a fucking wyvern and not a snake! C tier. Would be a B? Because I actually really enjoyed my time in this and it really has its moments, but I don't like AI generated content. Sue me. Oh my god, you guys, this is good! I demand every one of you to now pause this video, open up Steam, and download the demo for this game. Because, yeah, it's another game that just has the demo out by now, but unholy shit, this is good. Uh, editing blur here. I just noticed while making this screenshot that the demo actually isn't available anymore. I think it was like a limited time thing. I think Steam does that with like demos of upcoming games that for some reason are only temporary. While writing the script, I did not know that, so sorry, you can play this. But a few days ago, they announced that the release date is coming soon, so... So you're probably gonna be able to play it soon, sorry. <laughs> it's a 3D, over-the-shoulder, roguelite, which is already rare enough, but not only that, it's also fully themed around you being a necromancer, switching between life and death spells to fight against undead and resurrect them as your own. And I won't even wait until the end of the segment to announce that this game, just based on its demo, is S-tier. The spells are so cool, the minions are really varied, your minions 
feel strong while you still have to be completely active to keep them and yourself alive while also fighting alongside them. The art style is just beautiful. While I still hope there's going to be a bit more variety in the environments, if this demo was a vertical slice of what I can expect from the final game, I am wholeheartedly on board. Just give me more enemy types, more spells, more cool upgrades and you're golden. Primal Seed, if you see this, please send me a review copy for the second it's available. I need this game yesterday and I want to promote it more. I am willing to rebrand my entire channel around this game if I have to. This game already has a special place in my heart and on this channel. Because it was not recommended to me by one of my viewers, I actually was asked by the developers themselves to try this out. And I even was able to try out the demo live on stream, together with the lead designer of this game. If you haven't noticed by the first game of this video already, I live stream mostly on Fridays, playing different games for my channel and the Necromancer videos, so come say hi! And it just makes me so happy to see this. Just for clarification, I am not paid for this. They did not ask me for anything in return for the ability to play this with a dev. They simply took their time because they wanted to talk about their project with someone they thought would be passionate about the topic. I am talking about this game because I generally liked it and to thank them for asking me about my opinion on it. And also thank you, the viewer, for helping my channel to grow so that I am able to even take opportunities like this. So The Necromancer's Tale is a CRPG, and thanks to Baldur's Gate, most of you probably are already aware of what that means. Character customization, RPG elements, a lot of talking, dialogue choices that affect the story and so on. In this demo, you have multiple different snippets from the game. You get a feeling for what you're in for once the final game releases. The ones we tried together were for one from the start, which, who would have guessed it, starts you off from the beginning of the game and lets you play the first few chapters, and Combat, where you're already a little bit later in the campaign, to try out the really interesting combat system. It's a pretty hefty demo as well. We streamed it together for like 3 hours and didn't beat it, and in true CRPG fashion, prepare for a lot of reading. The game even starts you off with creating your character background in a storybook format that takes you through your entire childhood, read to you in a soothing voice, like you're being told a bedtime story by your grandpa. Wanted children of powerful families. These connections will serve you well, as long as you learn to look the other way from time to time. It's also nice to have a game here that is entirely focused around necromancy, with a game taking place in a pretty realistic world, which just happens to have liches and undead in it. The writing is also pretty good and kept me intrigued throughout, so I'm definitely looking forward to the actual release in the future, to see the downfall of my character into becoming a powerful necromancer unfold. Especially because I seduced this little cute guard over here, and got invited to swim with her later, so from that alone I am obligated to play the full release. Streaming this life of Elite Death also was just hilarious in some situations because I just kept <laughs> stumbling into bugs that completely confused the poor guy. It was nothing game breaking though, don't worry, just visual stuff that looked funny. Is I zoom- eh. That's not possible either. Is there, is there like a drunk effect that I'm seeing here? It is, yeah, but you shouldn't- it should be impossible to zoom back like that. <laughs> Maybe I just drank so much that I, I just transcended my body. And it should all be fixed by now, he went right to fixing the issues while he was still talking to me live. That's what I call dedication. The combat on the other hand, took me a bit to get into. Apparently, I was so bad at it that the dev actually made fun of me for that. But that's generally not the game's fault, it's just me being slow. It's turn-based combat, but your minions don't have their own turns. You have to activate them in your turn. So you have to strategize if you want to do something yourself or use your minions. It's a basic but deep enough system for what the game tries to do. And after a quick restart, I also got into it and beat the combat demo. With almost no casualties. I was also told that you're able to freely equip your minions yourself, which is also going to make it more manageable for me. I think this game has the potential to be another great modern CRPG. And you should try it out too. I mean, come on, the demo is right there and costs nothing, just do it. A tier. I'm setting really high hopes on this. This is another one that really intrigued me, and it's all because of its setting. And man, did it lure me in with its interesting aesthetic just to bite me up like a mimic. It's an RTS game. I never really played a lot of RTS games before. But hey, I like trying out the genres, so maybe I'm gonna like it? Um, I'm unsure if I'm fit to give an opinion on this because, oh my god, did it bore me? <laughs> I don't think other RTS are like this. I hope not. Going by the Steam reviews, I'm at least not alone with this. Even the chat was bored of it. I'm super sorry for that one guy who recommended this game to me. You seem to be extremely passionate about it, but I sadly didn't really get warm with it. I didn't really have to strategize even, or prepare anything in particular, I just moved around the map. 
turning as many people to our side as possible and then watched them attack and waited for them to finish to move to the next point and repeat. It also is probably like the least necromancy game we probably had so far. You aren't even summoning units or anything. What you're doing here is hacking into the minds of civilians to brainwash them to follow you. And yeah, I don't know, at that point, any game where you just control units besides yourself could count for this. And no, I still stand by my opinion of Pikmin being a necromancer game. Shut up. C. Again, sorry to the people who like this, but I certainly didn't. Whew, I already mentioned this game last time, and finally I'm able to talk about it because I actually unlocked the class. Swords and Survivors is another bullet heaven, and it's also one of the best ones I have ever played. You know the drill by now. You start up pretty weak, kill enemies that move forward to you, level up, unlock new skills, get completely overpowered, you win. Everything with obviously unnecessary good music. Soulstone works a little bit different though. Instead of being on a timer, you have to kill enough bosses, and they spawn after you reached a kill threshold. Doesn't change much, but it can make it a little bit more manageable in some situations. After you have beaten a stage, you unlock modifiers for it, to make it harder. And that's required for even wanting to unlock the Necromancer, because you have to beat the last stage in the game on difficulty 3 with all modifiers activated simultaneously, which means stuff like stronger enemies, more enemies, multiple bosses at once, constant meteor showers, and so on. And let's just say... It took a bit of grinding and build creating to manage this, but yeah, I have the Necromancer now and it's quite fun. Especially with a few of the other upgrades I unlocked that gives me access to other classes abilities. The class in general is also just completely busted. Just look at how my little guys are melting the enemies. I have the easiest runs with this class, which feels earned. I worked hard to get this. It's probably also still a long time before I have seen everything that this game has to offer, because there are also a lot more weapons to unlock for him, that give you even more skills to play around with. And also the skill tree itself, which has even more layers. You unlock after unlocking all 94 tiers in the inner one, and... Jesus Christ! But just unlocking the class took me like 16 hours, and this video has to come out eventually, especially after my last one flopped so hard. A tier. Definitely one of the best necromancer classes in a bullet heaven that I've played so far. And I'm really excited for when they finally release their roguelike spin-off. This necromancer in a more linear dungeon crawler scenario, I'm so on board. We had another bullet heaven, so we obviously need another roguelite as well. And here we have Sword of a Necromancer, a pretty basic dungeon crawler that has the name giving Sword of a Necromancer as its main gimmick. And I'm sorry to say it like this, but in my opinion, it's too basic. The controls are kinda clunky, with everything feeling pretty slow and even unresponsible at times. And for a game that even has necromancy in its name, it also is kinda underwhelming. You have one slot for every face button where you can allocate weapons into to attack with them by pressing the corresponding button. Or you can also use the sword of the necromancer and attach those to a slot. With this the game tries to give you a certain level of strategy, making you think about wanting more gear or more summons. There even are passive items that just buff you while also taking a slot. And I don't know, I just didn't really get warm with this. The gameplay is just too slow for me with the runs being too similar. I like the story though, with you recalling memories of the person you are trying to revive in this dungeon, the deeper you get. So if the gameplay didn't look all that bad to you, and you would like to see a cute story unfold over time in a not all that challenging roguelite, maybe give it a shot. But for me, it's sadly going in C tier. Undead Horde is another one of those games that was just constantly recommended under the videos and that I have to try it out at some point. And yeah, damn. This is basically everything I wanted from the Unliving and more. First thing, it's not a roguelike. And being a roguelike definitely isn't a minus, but I think we can all agree that sometimes having a curated experience just feels nicer. And this definitely applies to this game. The balancing feels more on your side with your minions being really powerful and yourself also being able to do a lot of damage. Your visibility also feels clearer, which results in way less frustration. But that doesn't mean that you can't get overwhelmed, and your army can't get completely erased from existence. But that also isn't as big of a problem. You just teleport back to your base, heal up, and resummon all the minions you want from these convenient statues you unlock after defeating enough enemies of one type. This is just a super cozy and fun dungeon crawler, as basic as it can be, but in the correct mood, exactly what I needed. This is a pure, through and through, necromancy experience, where you explore areas, pillage villages, let the fallen villagers rise and destroy everything they once loved in your name. It is perfect. I think we have it. Our second Overlord tier game. As a necromancer connoisseur, I couldn't be more proud. 
This is a game I would not have expected here. Warmer Vermintide 2 got a new DLC out of a blue years after release, and also a year after Fatshark has already released the spiritual sequel Dark Tide, and the DLC adds a new class to the game, and of all things, it's a necromancer. I bet you can't imagine how my comment section looked after my last few videos. This was a generally awesome surprise, and also Highly appreciated, because my favorite class in the game already was the Pyromancer, and now you're telling me that I can play as my favorite fantasy class ever in one of the best Warhammer games? Yeah, I don't really think I have that much to add at this point. For a few that don't know Vermintide, it's a Left 4 Dead-like game, set in the universe of Warhammer Fantasy. So instead of everyone having guns and trying to survive a zombie apocalypse, you're playing as a group of fantasy classes, fighting against a huge barrage of enemies and monsters, but primarily... Oh, shit! Alright! Every character has multiple specifications. You unlock by leveling them up. And Sienna always had one less than the others. But not anymore! She can summon a group of spooky boys now. And yep, it's great. The game was already awesome, but now she uses the same weapons as the other classes, but now they all shimmer with a cool looking green fire instead of a normal looking one. But that's obviously not the cool part. The cool thing is her ultimate ability, which is the way she summons her little group of six beauties. And they aren't on a timer. They stay with you until they die, or you sacrifice one of them to reset your mana. Because if you use your magic too much, you basically just make the game harder for you. So now you can just sacrifice one of your skeletons to instantly get back to using your spells. I'm actually surprised it works this way, because your ultimate normally charges so fast that you can instantly resummon your boys should they have fallen apart. A tier necromancer. I hope the one who is responsible for making this DLC a reality at Fat Shark got a huge race. What would you say when I told you that I am a massive fan of Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, to the point where I could not put it down, but that I was so disappointed by the original release of Shadow of War that I never played it more than a few hours? I did not know about this game having necromancy, and no, I am not counting you controlling orcs and fighting with them this time. I'm talking about straight up, it's name dropped that way, necromancy. And there's a pretty big reason I didn't know about the game having it. You have to beat it to unlock the abilities. So don't mind me spoiling the ending of Shadow of War here for a second. <coughs> when you're getting close to the final showdown with Sauron, your partner, the ghost and original Smith of the Ring, Celebrimbor, is revealing his true plans to you. He plans to basically become Sauron 2.0, and we're not so cool with that. So he leaves us for the other girl, which is really not good because he's also the only reason we're even still alive. But luckily we killed another school with necromancy powers just before that, so we snatch his ring and and have basically the exact same powers as before. Like it's literally the exact same with taking over orcs and everything, but now we look a bit more edgy and also have a new special that allows us to resurrect every recently killed enemy in the near vicinity to us. Pretty neat, but to be honest, I kinda hope for a little bit more after how much the comments have hyped it up. It definitely is cool to have and it's a fun story explanation, but you get it so late in the story that they also weren't really able to do anything interesting with it or give you specific new abilities. I mean, I literally saw the credits roll like 10 minutes after unlocking this, so while Celebrimbo and Sauron are stuck in their perpetual hugging match, you can use your newly found abilities to do the same things you have already done anyways, which isn't a bad thing. The main game itself was already great, especially after they patched the game to not be a pay-to-win loot box fest anymore. Ever since then, it's overall an actually really good game, and also great representation for our favorite gameplay style in the AAA space. It's a very loose A tier. Would have given it an A, but the game itself is really good and gets better the more you play it. So even though the necromancy doesn't add that much more to what already was there, it complements a great game to be slightly better. Well, that's it for today. Hope to see you next time. Check out the live streams where I'm playing these games live. I still have like at least 50 more games to check out because oh my god, the amount of comments you guys have sent me over the last few videos is giving me anxiety. I'm excited to play more necromancy games. Man, this job is great. I, I, I don't know why it always takes me three months to make a new necromancer video. I, I want to do other stuff. I don't want to only do necromancer, uh, like best necromancer games videos, but I think I'm gonna focus on them more for now because... You guys seem to really enjoy it, so I'm just gonna do it. So I'm just gonna continue playing a little bit more of that, yeah? I'm still overwhelmed by the amount of necromancer games I've never heard of before. 
So I'm really glad I'm able to play more. This video had a few that I didn't really enjoy, but I also still want to mention them because I want to include every game, if I like it or not, and rank them. That's why I have a tier list to show which games I really enjoyed and which games I didn't. I'm playing these games based on recommendations of you guys, so yeah, I think that makes sense. <laughs> Don't worry, the next Necromancer part isn't gonna take another three months. I'm gonna make more of them. If you see this on the day of release, I'm already streaming more Necromancer games anyway, so check that out if you want. We have a great time over there, and I think I have to chill my, my channel a little bit more, so yeah. Like and subscribe. I should have probably said that earlier in the video, but I don't care. Like and subscribe. Check out the live streams. See you in the next one.